Great. Um, so my name is John Keskes from Stewardship. Um, I really want to welcome you and thank you for joining this uh, webinar, this presentation. Um, the, the topic is how can your church or ministry become financially healthier? And um, I understand that there are going to be people from charities and churches here. Um, this is mainly church based, but you can glean a lot of the um, a lot of the the, um, the stuff for, for the charity um, side of things as well. So um, with finances, it's a very spiritual topic. So I'm going to quickly pray and then uh, invite God to do what he wants to do. And then I'll do the best that I can for you as well. So Jesus, I want to thank you very much for everybody who is attending here. Thank you so much that these uh, wonderful people have chosen to invest in themselves and in their churches and in their ministries. And we pray that you would come and give us wisdom, that you would open our hearts, open our ears and give us insight into what you want to say today. And I pray that you would give me the grace to be able to do this well so that it's an encouragement for those who are watching and listening. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Wonderful. So thank you for your time. Uh, I hope your first session was good. Um, and I'm going to do no comparisons about this session. So uh, I'll just dive straight into it. The, the triple A um, is all about a financial rating in the world. And it's about countries and it's about companies and how credit worthy they actually are. Um, it's been going since 1924 and recently stewardship designed their own triple A to be the gold standard of how churches and charities can handle their ministries uh, and when it comes to finances and financial strength. Um, for example, Germany is a triple A country. You probably got that one and expected that. But Britain used to be a AAA country, and we recently lost it. Um, and people like um, Spain and Italy and Greece, they've been struggling, and so they have lesser rankings. Now, what's really interesting is that when people look from the outside in on a country or on a, um, a company or a charity or even a church, they will make their judgments around how financially sound um, that organization is and how missionally sound it is when it comes to the Christian aspect of things. So let me move on to what stewardship have developed in their AAA. And it's basically around attitude is the first A, administration is the second A, and accountability is the third A. And, and these are all incredibly important areas to, to address and to get right when it comes to having healthy finances. So this is a biblical framework, mainly taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Um, and, and if you are operating well within a AAA, we would expect to, to, for you to be able to demonstrate a good and healthy relationship with money as an organization. So let's, let's dive in a little bit uh, into a bit more detail. What would we like to see from the AAA if it's operating in our church or charity? We would expect to see uh, you seeing the benefit of engaged and discipled church members. Um, it's, it's about... Uh, basically taking your people on a journey into generosity and and into a right relationship with money and from a charity perspective that's that's difficult because you don't necessarily get to disciple church members because you're a charity but it, you can take your donors on a journey as well maybe your major donors or all of your donors if you have the time and capacity um, we would expect everybody to be able to more and more fulfill the New Testament call to be generous stewards who are well resourced because uh, this is God's mission that we're on and we need to be faithful stewards and, and also demonstrating uh, and operating the best practice in managing money. Um, that's an important aspect. And finally, being a church or ministry that is good to give to is, is essential because if people don't see that you are handling money well, they won't want to give. They won't have the confidence to be able to, to give more. And actually, they shouldn't give because they need to be good stewards of the resources that God's given them. So um, people will see a tangible difference if this AAA is uh, operating throughout your church or charity. So let's have a look at some more detail of the actual AAA. Attitude is the first one. Now, we all know that the attitude of the church and charity will be adopted um, by the, from the same attitude as the leaders. Leaders have an incredible influence on churches and charities. And this is no more true than when it comes to money. Money is a, is a, a very serious way where the leader's attitude filters through the whole organization. 
So let's get into uh, having a right attitude towards money. Now, now, first of all, it's important to get ourselves straight. Um, I want to share a little bit around, around this personally because transparency helps to clear up our attitudes. Um, and when I was, uh, my previous job before this, I was a salesman uh, traveling the UK, visiting clients. And um, basically, we, I, I would spend about five pounds every day on lunch. Uh, now, I was at that organization for, uh, for nine years, and when I got married, my wife and I went on a Christians Against Poverty money course, and it clearly became transparent that um, I had wasted £11,000 in nine years spending £5 a day on lunch. Now, my wife clearly let me know that that was not being a good steward. Um, and I learned a lesson and also that transparency is really important. So within our organizations, it is really important to have that transparency. Um, and so I would ask you to consider what's your culture when it comes to money? Um, do you have a, an outward flowing generous heart for everybody to see? Or are there things that you need to maybe discuss and address in your marriage, in your family, in your church, in your team, or in your ministry, um, because having the right culture uh, when it comes to money is important. It's also a spiritual battleground. Now, this is so clear that Jesus made it clear in Matthew 6, 24. Money is actually a rival God. It is a spiritual power that seeks your worship and devotion. And Jesus clearly says in Matthew 6, 24, no one can serve two masters, for he will either hate one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. And so Jesus is actually clearly saying that this is a critical area for us to deal with. And we need to be aware if money or possessions are touching our hearts. Because if, if it is touching our heart in a way that's affecting us, then it will affect our ministry and our relationship with God because we cannot, simply cannot have two masters. Um, interestingly, the word that Jesus used for mammon in the original text didn't just mean money. It meant possessions, fame, status, and actually whatever is more important than the Lord Jesus himself. In Luke 12, 15, he also gave us a warning around being aware of stuff, beware of things. Um, it says, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist of the abundance of possessions. And so we have an opportunity as leaders to overcome these areas in our lives, to gain control of them and to model them to others so that the next generation can actually come through and have less problems to deal with and be more financially savvy and helpful. So the second A is administration. And the, the important part of administration is I think this is overlooked. Um, lots of people just look for people to do administration so that the ministry can function well. But actually, people who do administration should be honored. Uh, they're a gift to the church and to ministries. And uh, I, I would love to see them elevated. So here we go. In 2 Corinthians 8, 19, Paul was actually dealing with a huge gift to the Jerusalem church who were struggling in poverty. And uh, Paul was quite a fundraiser, actually. And he was challenging here the Corinthian church who actually said uh, that they wanted to give money, but they'd failed to actually give it. And so um, Titus was actually being sent along uh, as a bit of a heavyweight to say, um, look, guys, you've, you've said this, please, let's give, let's have this gift. Now, in, in verse 19, Paul was actually saying that Titus was invited along with another brother to administer the gift to honor the Lord himself. Now, administration honors the Lord. Now, that's something we need to take seriously, because when people give you gifts uh, and give you finances, they are giving of their stewardship, which they are being faithful for. And often this is an act of worship. And so when we are dealing with people's money, it's a very serious and spiritual transaction. And so administration is important. Things like uh, financial controls and processes are very important in churches and in charities. So it's, it might be that the leader may not be good at administration, um, but we're not saying we want to turn you into an administrator or an accountant. However, it is the leader's responsibility to make sure that those correct processes and the administration is in place for the health of the charity. Um, because no matter, much, no matter how much money you have, you will not be a healthy organization unless you gain control of money. So good administration goes hand in hand 
with generosity and it honors the Lord. And, um, and, and it's important to look at these specific aspects like uh, financial controls and processes and budgets and planning, because I'll go into that in a little bit more detail later on, um, as well as having the finance in your church or charity uh, being a team game. In the UK, there has been uh, quite a lot of background with uh, the finances being done by a treasurer, by one single person, and that is not something that we would recommend. We are saying as stewardship that to have healthy finances, you need a team to do that well. And I'll, I'll explain a little bit more about that later on. But good stewardship is absolutely essential for giving of money and also for receiving of money. And so when we are looking at receiving generosity from people, whether it's their time, their skills or their money, um, then we don't want to be a leaky bucket. We don't want to have their generosity pouring into a bucket and then it pouring out because we haven't got the right processes in place. So accountability is the last of the AAA. And this is an interesting one because this is the probably the strongest control that you can have in an organization when it comes to money. Why do you think that the two highly respected leaders, Titus and possibly Luke, were asked to go along and join in the journey for the Jerusalem offering uh, to do the administration? It was all about accountability. So let's find out what this looks like. Accountability in this context is actually all about protecting God's reputation and also your church or charity's reputation. Um, in 2 Corinthians 8, 17 to 21, Paul clearly says that it's important to do things right in the eyes of the Lord and of man. And in order to do that, you have to do things well. We would say first thing would be to get more than one person, get a team together to do the finances. That spreads the load and it shares the risk, but it also reduces reliance on one person and it avoids stress and burnout as well. Um, typically, uh, it can also protect against fraud. Now, you might not think that fraud happens in churches and charities, but it's something that stewardship deal with on a regular basis, unfortunately. Um, so, let me, I'll give you a couple of examples of that in a minute, just so that you understand how practical it is. Sharing financial information is, is very important with your church or charity. Um, if you don't share, then mistrust can, can grow and you need to be able to demonstrate good accountability with people's gifts as they are giving it to you. So that's something that we would cons uh, very much recommend doing. Uh, also recognizing the lure of money. Um, now, a lot of charities uh, handle online donations now um, and there's not a lot of cash going around unless you're collecting on the street but um, churches still have a lot of cash giving even in the UK as well and we need to recognize that money is a lure a rival god that wants your worship don't forget that part because if you don't handle cash well this is often the the weakest area of church when it comes to finances and financial control um, and we need to encourage um, people to be able to have a culture of challenge. Um, if you don't have the right relationships and the right accountability in your church when it comes to money, then you won't have the openness to be able to uh, receive questions and be challenged in a healthy way um, and, and provide the answers that people are looking for. Now, we're not saying have an open day and, and dig into all the details publicly, but if you can demonstrate this in a good and healthy way, in a good and healthy environment, then people will be confident to be able to ask the right questions and you can provide the right information so that there is no um, suspicion at all. And finally, we would love to make sure that finances serve the church and its mission and not the other way around. Uh, quite often, budgets drive churches and charities and, and not the vision and not the plan. Um, we would like to just make sure that keep the vision, the vision and keep the plan, the plan and the budget is there to serve the plan and the vision. It's not the driving force. So what if you don't have the AAA? to a strong degree working in your church or charity. What happens? What symptoms would you look out for? Well, actually, churches can appear on the surface to be operating um, absolutely fine for quite a long time, uh, unhindered for months or even years or decades without seriously addressing one of the AAAs, but we would still say that they are actually sick in a, sick in a way that um, just the public can't see yet. So let's just have a look at what sickness might look like when it comes to uh, your attitude around money. Um, maybe when you don't have 
values or don't communicate the values really well around finances. Um, well, we, we won't be able to make disciples in this area. Um, and we know what Jesus has said around finances and how that it is a vital um, area to address. Um, there are three things in the West that uh, leaders often talk about, which are critical areas, money, sex and power that we have to deal with in our hearts. And so let's not, um, let's not fail to tackle this one. We can be wrongly motivated and misunderstood if you don't have the right attitude. Um, languages, language can change. Um, people can become a little careless around money or even a little bit flippant if they don't have the right attitude. Um, and people then can react in the wrong way instead of responding in the right way. Uh, and we all need to remember that people can see beyond our words. So let's just bear that in mind. Often a poor attitude towards money shows that the church or the charity can begin to exist to serve itself to serve its church members, it becomes a little club. And often it can then come to serve the church leaders instead of being missional and going out to the communities and allowing a flow of generosity to become mission and the gospel going out to, to people who need it desperately. Um, and, and then if, if people start seeing a poor attitude towards money, they will stop giving and they will stop praying. And it comes to a bit of a decline, a bit of a slippery slope, um, where you can then become isolated in your own community rather than being outward looking. So let's try and avoid this stuff and be aware if we do see it happening that we can address it. Uh, when it comes to uh, administration, sickness um, might be around failing to, things failing to handle things well in an efficient and safe way. Um, now this is this is probably one of the quickest and most evident ways that people will see a sickness when it comes to administration um, because you they will start to be able to see that you are not stewarding their money well um, remember that leaky bucket we don't want to be unfaithful stewards in receiving people's generosity um, and it can cause pastoral issues if somebody's giving financially and they're not seeing um, the evidence or the fruit of what they've given to then that can be a pastoral issue which isn't something you want um, Money can also be misspent or misappropriated. Now in UK charity law, this is a huge no-no um, because uh, it's, it's an open door. Legally, if somebody gives you money, you have to spend it in the way that they have uh, asked it to be given to you. Um, if, you don't, if you don't have good administration, it opens the door to temptation as well. And you are failing to protect your people and your reputation. So please do get that administration right. When I mentioned fraud before, it does happen. We've had um, church treasurers who are looking after the finances themselves. We had public, unfortunately it reaches the papers where a church treasurer had been a gambler and he'd had a bad streak and he starts to borrow money off the church because he has access to it. And the more he borrows, nobody's actually finding out that he's done anything wrong. And so he keeps borrowing. And before you know it, he's borrowed, borrowed 30,000 pounds and ends up in jail. Um, the same has happened numerous times for people in bad debt um, and, and also other aspects. So fraud does happen and we need to get administration right to stop it. It can cause employment issues as well. If you're employing people and you are paying them not on time or you're not paying them the right amounts of money, then that's, that's an, uh, it's going to be a problem with their attitude. Um, it's going to affect their ability to work well. Um, and donors will lose confidence. Um, wise donors do not give to something that's not healthy. So let's get these robust places, these robust processes in place. So when it comes to sickness and accountability, um, this is around having a little openness and reporting clearly what we've done. Um, we need to get that team in place. That's a, a crucial starting point. And again, like we said before, share the financial information in a healthy way so that we, um, we do not uh, keep things together and, uh, and people can become more suspicious. We don't want to be left open to criticism. We need to do what's right in the eyes of God and in the eyes of man. And, uh, and when final decisions start being taken behind closed doors and with poor processes and people don't say, why are we doing that? I never knew we'd done that. Then again, they start talking and suspicion can arise. And we've got to remember that trust is easily lost, but it's so, so difficult to win. Now, a lot of this stuff is the AAA in organizations. And some of you still might be thinking, my goodness, there's a lot to go through here. How do we actually practically get to grips with this? Now, 
we've seen that by leading by example, it's crucial to shaping a church and a charity, charitable organization well. And Stewardship have developed a tool for the UK church and UK charities, which is called a financial health check. Now it's mainly set up for churches, um, but this can be gleaned, uh, principles can be gleaned for charities. And, and I think as well that although it's a UK charity based product, which is free, um, you will be able to glean biblical principles uh, from this, which aren't necessarily relating to UK tax and charity law. So I would look at, encourage you to look at the AAA through the lens of this financial health check. Uh, it's about 250 questions long, uh, so it's very detailed, but um, it takes the personality out of conversations between the trustees, the leaders, and the treasurer or the finance team. Um, so we would say, please do spend some time and create an action plan um, to celebrate your strengths and to um, to, to do something about your weaknesses. And once you've gone through this um, financial health check, you will get a spider graph, which shows you clearly um, areas of strength and weakness. It's things like leadership and culture. How do you teach on money? Generosity and giving, areas of risk, financial controls, fundraising, all those kind of things. Um, so we've done this to serve existing churches uh, well, and you can download that free at a later date. Um, but what about new churches? So, whoops, something that's close to my heart is church planting. Now, what would it look like to have the AAA functioning in new churches really well, right from the start? Now, I know God is doing something in the UK and across Europe when it comes to church planting, and I'm incredibly excited to play a small part in that. Um, and we know that it's so much easier to shape new leaders uh, when it comes to new churches rather than changing old processes and, and attitudes. So we have a significant opportunity to prepare ourselves and our resources and our plans for future church plants. Now, Stewardship have talked uh, to over 250 church plants over the last few years, and we have about 50 of them going through a church planting pathway, which we've created. And I'll share a little bit more of that later on. Um, but let's have a look at what the church plant, the AAA looks like for church planting. Now, applying the AAA to a blank canvas, I think the first question would have to be, have we really got a blank canvas when it comes to church plants? Because your leaders, if they have already got leadership experience and church experience, they may be coming with their own baggage that needs to be dealt with. And I think we need to be able to, to identify areas that need to be dealt with. Things like personal debt. In the UK, personal debt for church leaders is an issue. And Christians Against Poverty have a, um, a confidential helpline for church ministers and leaders because there is so much debt around. And we need to see that broken so that they, they can't have confidence to teach on money if they can't control money themselves. So let's teach biblically and regularly on money and break this generational cycle and culture uh, and taboo around money. In England, um, our culture of money is we don't talk about money. Um, in the church, is, there's a poverty spirit that's in operating that needs to be broken. So you twin those two together and you get we don't talk about it and uh, we don't get taught about it. And so we never change. Um, and that has to be broken. I think if you, if you don't create a culture, then you default to the culture around you. And, and that's a shame because the kingdom culture needs to be established in the church uh, for the mission to be successful. So let's equip the church to be consistent in modeling and coaching healthy finances. And this AAA will be transformational in, in new churches. We also have an opportunity to create an incubator of generosity and stewardship of kingdom resources in every new church that we have. And I think that um, when God is doing something across Europe, then generosity can be a significant transformation part of planting new churches. Process does help formation. It really does. Um, church planters often um, aren't very good at administration. Some are, I've seen some, but um, it's important to recognize that we still need a process when it comes to getting the right skills and knowledge. So we've developed a church planting pathway for the UK church, um, which helps them to fully understand what it's going to take to form a healthy new church across governance and finance, and uh, money and ministry and generosity. Um, we want to provide support and guidance at each stage of the church plant so that uh, it removes confusion and fear um, because it really does. We see having conversations with them, it breeds confidence into them and their ministry when they go, 
there is a process and I'm not on my own. And that's very important. And so we would love to see church networks and denominations creating church planting pathways or whatever you want to call them um, to support church planters in their journey. Make it easy, make it rep replicatable and contextualize it because that changes in every single church plant. So if you can create a holistic pathway to help people in your context, in your nation, with your laws around um, tax and, and giving, um, then I think that that would be excellent. Um, and we've also got the opportunity to develop leadership across all areas of the church, including finance and generosity, um, and get that team in place for their finances, because generosity does fuel mission. So um, I just wanted to conclude a little bit, um, and then we could have some questions. So healthy ministries and churches can respond from a place of strength and sustainability to God's agenda. That's really important that we have that agility to be able to respond when God leads. Um, and modeling a new culture and working out the AAA in detail in our own context can be transformational for not just for our organizations, but also for our people. And church planting is a perfect opportunity to form new churches and new leaders into the future.